Welcome to a House of the Dying Sun video. Today I'm going to beat Raid at Sumir's Cloud on the highest difficulty level while getting all the bonus objectives and the flagship bounty. Our primary objective is to destroy the supply caches. There are two supply caches on the left and two supply caches on the right as we warp in. The bonus objective is to destroy four supply ships. Enemy forces include two fighters that will engage us immediately, two shielded destroyers with an interesting set of turrets that are sort of in the middle of the battlefield between the supply caches, and two corvettes that won't engage until our forces come near the supply caches inside the shield barrier. The enemy flagship warps in with only one ship as escort, but that is a kind of an interesting ship. It's an interdictor destroyer that prevents you from warping out of the level so long as it is alive. The flagship itself is equipped with a missile launcher capable of launching massive volleys. The missile volleys are intense. Now, technically you can dodge the missiles. You need to fly sort of perpendicular to their incoming trajectory and then pull up as well as just constantly be holding down the afterburners. It's much more reliable to face the missiles head on and shoot them down with the autocannon. Now you actually want to wait. Even if the missiles are in range, some of your shots will miss. I wait until they get within like two and a half kilometers to start firing, otherwise there will still be incoming missiles while you're reloading, and that is not a situation you want to be in. Even then, it's not 100% that you'll shoot down all the missiles. You may notice that I'm waggling my nose around a little bit to catch all of the missiles, because even if they're coming straight at you, they still close in a little bit of a spread. Other notable features of the level include the small but very powerful shields on the two supply caches to the left, as well as the massive energy shield generated by a generator in the middle of the other two supply caches. This is a really interesting feature of House of the Dying Sun that I wish got used in more levels. Fighting on the edge of one of these one-way shields is a really interesting tactical experience because you're safe from fire on the outside if you're on the inside of the shield, but you're exposed if you're on the outside. The two shielded destroyers don't come with the standard destroyer turret. Instead, they sport turrets that are much more like, if not identical to, corvette turrets. Now, even though the corvette is a smaller class of ship, this actually makes the destroyers much more dangerous. The standard turret on the destroyer is slow firing, the projectiles travel slowly, it's really easy to avoid. It's only really a danger when you get a huge destroyer wolf pack destroying your capital ships in challenge mode, or if you're flying in a straight line. But the corvette-style turrets and it looks like these destroyers mount two each. I don't know if that's literally doubling the damage output, but it seems to. These things hardly ever miss. They fire rapidly, and they can take you down in a matter of seconds. In fact, these destroyers and their turrets are one of our key concerns when figuring out our loadout for this level. I do not use the Kamikaze chassis because of how easy it is for those turrets to take me down when I already have a low amount of armor. The flagship's bridge regenerates very quickly in this level. That might seem unimportant, but remember that every time you destroy the bridge, it deals one-third of the flagship's entire hit points as damage to the hull. So the fact that the bridge regenerates quickly is actually a huge liability to the flagship. And finally, the last key feature of this level is that interdictor destroyer that warps in with the flagship. This is a really interesting idea, the idea that you can prevent ships from warping out of the battle zone. I really love this, and I wish it was put to more use. It's almost an afterthought in this level. We don't really have to worry about it other than as something that also needs to get taken down before we can warp out of the level. Before we get into loadouts, I want to point out just a couple of oddities that happened to me while I was trying to complete this mission as fast as possible. One, which I would love to be able to make use of reliably, was that when I was attempting this mission with the Kamikaze chassis, I had lost a wingmate and then I got my three kills to earn a reinforcement. Your reinforcements always warp in in front of the current ship you're flying, and here, the ship happened to warp in inside of the frame, inside the hitbox of the enemy flagship, killing it instantly. Even though the shields on the two caches to the left of your warp point are very, very small, they're very close to 
into the hitbox of the caches themselves. You can sort of poke your nose inside the shields and take them down that way, but I found this to be too slow and unreliable to get a good speedy run. This is just a glitch. I'm not sure if it's due to the missiles having trouble targeting me after I made my gap jump, but the missiles are frozen in place until they time out and explode in this clip. Did you know that enemy pilots can eject from their ships? Not just the flagship captains. And lastly, you can use the enemy missiles to take down the shields or even destroy whatever you're trying to destroy. Here I put the missiles between myself and one of the shields shielded supply caches, and it nearly takes it down for me. I've tried a lot of loadouts on this level, mainly kamikaze and either the gap drive or the speed boost, but my wingmates are just so bullheaded they get into the action and end up getting themselves killed, whether by the corvettes or the destroyers that have corvette turrets. So I ended up not using kamikaze, it's just it reduces your health too much and you get knocked out too easily. I ended up using gap drive for the speed and penetrator ammo to deal that extra 75% bonus damage versus capital ships and supply caches. For weaponry, I'm running the auto cannon. There's certainly a case to be made for the long rifle here, but since I'm doing this with the gap drive, I'm gonna be getting in close to my opponents anyway, so auto cannon's my more reliable damage. As my secondary, I love the blunderbuss. Who wouldn't love a space shotgun? This thing is so much fun. Sure, it doesn't do any damage to a target more than a kilometer away, but I got gap drive. I'm gonna be getting in close and personal with my enemy. And lastly, purifier bombs. Gotta get that massive damage in. The attack plan is to use gap drive to jump towards the supply caches and the cargo ships to the left. Take out the cargo ships with the blunderbuss and your autocannon. Use purifier bombs to knock out the supply caches. Make sure you line up that reticle and stabilize it. It will take two out of three purifier bombs, one to get through the shield and one to destroy the supply cache. From there, target the two other escaping cargo ships. Those are our bonus objectives. After they're taken out, use gap drive to jump to the final two supply caches. You want to kill the supply caches and the bonus objectives as fast as possible because that will trigger the warping in of the enemy flagship. While the flagship is warping in, it's never a bad idea to take out some targets of opportunity, but otherwise we're just going to kind of ignore things, probably ignoring those two obnoxious destroyers. As soon as the flagship warps in, use gap drive to jump in close. I do take out the missile launcher. That thing is just too dangerous to leave around, even though if you have some purifier bombs, you can take out the capital ship relatively quickly. On that note, you will need to switch into a ship that does have purifier bombs. Try to use your purifier bombs to knock out the bridge itself, but otherwise target the bridge with your blunderbuss. Switch to the autocannon while the blunderbuss is reloading, but halfway through the autocannon magazine, switch back to blunderbuss because it will have been reloaded by that point, and it does much more damage to hull. From there, destroy the interdictor destroyer. You want to focus down the interdictor destroyer before worrying about assassinating the flagship captain, because the destroyer's interdictor field will still be active while that ship is performing its death animation. So knock out the interdictor, then kill the ejected traitor lord from the flagship, then warp out as fast as possible. Here is the fastest run that I've been able to achieve in its entirety. 